Let's talk about chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are the heart of chemistry. Chemical reactions involve a change from reactant substances to product substances. The products have physical and chemical properties that are different from those of the reactants. Many ionic compounds, meaning soluble salts, dissociate into independent ions when dissolved in water. So as say sodium chloride, which is a soluble salt, I place that in water, it's going to dissolve into its ions until it reaches its saturation point. These compounds that freely dissociate into independent ions and aqueous solutions are called electrolytes. The aqueous solutions are capable of conducting an electric current because they have charged ions capable of carrying a current. Generally, ionic solids that dissolve, meaning soluble, in water are electrolytes. Not all ionic compounds are soluble. It depends on the charge and size of the ions involved in the ionic bond. We have some rules to help to decide this that we'll talk about later. Not all electrolytes are ionic compounds. Some molecular compounds, mostly your acids, dissociate into ions. Say, so, um, hydrochloric acid, it breaks up into H plus and Cl minus. The resultant solution is electrically conducting, and so we say that the molecular substance is an electrolyte. Most molecular compounds, except acids, dissolve but do not dissociate into ions. They're soluble, but no ions are formed. Example, glucose dissolves in water, but it forms its glucose as a, as a species together. It doesn't have any ions. These compounds are referred to as non-electrolytes. They dissolve in water to give a non-conducting solution. Covalent bonds are stronger than ionic bonds and do not dissociate in water, resulting in a neutral dissolved species. Electrolytes dissolved in water to produce ions, but do so at varying extents and dictates their conductivity. The higher the number of ions, the higher the conductivity. A strong electrolyte is an electrolyte that exists in solution entirely as ions. We're basically saying 100% dissociation to reach that saturation point. So sodium chloride, which is a soluble salt in a strong electrolyte, breaks up 100% into sodium and chloride ions until it reaches its saturation point. Most ionic solids that dissolve in water do so almost completely as ions, so they are strong electrolytes. Strong electrolytes are typically your strong acids, your strong bases, and your soluble salts. A weak electrolyte is an electrolyte that dissolves in water to give a relatively small percentage of ions. It does dissolve, but there's a small amount of ions. Take, for instance, HCM, which is a weak acid, um, hydroxyanic acid. Basically, it performs hydronium and cyanide ions. However, it's less than 5% of the ions are formed. The majority of the HCM stays as a whole at the bulk substance. Most soluble molecular compounds are either non-electrolytes or very weak electrolytes. Weak electrolytes typically are your weak acids, your weak bases, and your insoluble salts. Solutions of your weak electrolytes contain only a small percentage of ions. We denote the situation by writing the equation with a double arrow in the middle. We stated the term strong acid, strong base, and soluble salt, insoluble salt, but we haven't described how to determine which species fall under these terms. To be able to write chemical reactions correctly, we need to understand solubility and how strong and weak species dissociate in water. First thing we'll cover is the solubility rules for ionic compounds. You must know the solubility rules to distinguish between soluble and insoluble salts. Soluble salts would typically write AQ behind it, meaning soluble, and dissociate 100% into ions up to their saturation point, while insoluble salts would tend to write S behind it for solid and have very little dissociation. Solubility rules for ionic compounds. All compounds containing alkali, 
metal cations, meaning that group 1 metals, and the ammonia ion are soluble. 2. All compounds containing nitrate, perchlorate, chlorate, and acetate anions are soluble. All chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble, with some exceptions, those containing silver, lead, to, and mercurous ions. 4. All sulfates are soluble, with some exceptions, those containing mercurous, lead, to, barium, strontium, and calcium, and silver sulfate is considered slightly soluble. 5. All hydroxides are insoluble except compounds of the alkali metals, meaning going back to group, the rule number one, and calcium, strontium, and barium are classified as slightly soluble. These are your strong bases. All other compounds containing phosphate, sulfide, carbonate, chromate, and sulfate, excuse me, sulfite, and most other anions are insoluble, except those that also contain alkali metals or ammonia, going back to that group one, that uh, rule number one. Generally, compounds that dissolve with a concentration greater than 0.1 molarity are considered soluble. And we put the AQ behind it. Those that do less than 0.01 molarity are considered insoluble. We'll put the S behind them. Those in between are considered slightly soluble, and in this class we will assume the slightly soluble ones as soluble. So let's look at this, the rules and see if we can apply them. Let's figure out what's soluble or insoluble. Mercurous chloride, soluble, insoluble. Well, if you look at the rules, it says all chlorides are soluble with some exceptions, this being one of those exceptions. So therefore, we're saying this is insoluble, based on rule number three. Potassium iodide. Well, based on rule number one, saying all alkali metals are soluble, as well as all iodides are soluble, with some exceptions, and this is not one of them, we would put AQ behind that because it's soluble, based on number rule one and three. Lead to nitrate. Uh, looking at that one, we know all nitrates are soluble. There are no exceptions, although lead is part of many exceptions. It's not for the nitrates. So based on our rule number two, we will say that we will put AQ behind it and call it soluble. Homework 26 deals with your solubility rule.